<sighs> Good morning. Mike Scott here, the movie critic at the Times Picayune in New Orleans and NOLA.com. Welcome back to the Movie Cave for today's Popcorn Breakfast. Today is Monday, December 15th, 2014, and we'll start today with Sunday night's premiere in New York of Ava DuVernay's civil rights picture, Selma, about the voting rights marches in Alabama in 1965, led, of course, by the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. And in many ways, the premiere looked like a, your, your regular average uh, movie premiere with all the attendant glitz and glamour and gowns and movie stars. But in other ways, it was a, a fairly singular event as a number of the film's uh, cast used the opportunity to discuss current civil rights issues, specifically the, the, the death of young black men at the hand of police who many see as uh, not being held accountable by the legal system. Uh, Wendell Pierce, for example, the New Orleans actor who co-stars in Selma, he walked the red carpet with an I Can't Breathe t-shirt, an obvious reference to the death of Eric Garner in New York after being put in a chokehold by a New York police officer. Uh, his co-star Ruben Santiago Hudson walked the red carpet with his hands raised for photographers, an obvious reference to the death of Michael Brown in Ferguson, Missouri. And then after the movie, DuVernay and many of the, the, the crew members or the cast members wore similar I Can't Breathe t-shirts. And really, as they talked with reporters, sort of the same theme kept cropping up. And that is, although Selma is, yes, it's a, it's a historical drama, it, it really does touch on very, very modern day issues. As Pierce told the Associated Press, quote, this is not a movie about the past. It's a movie about a very, very acute present because it's all the same issues that have been going on for a long time. Selma is scheduled to land in limited release in theaters on Christmas. That's only in, in a couple of bigger cities. The rest of us are going to get to see it on January 9th when it opens in wide release. And then moving on a little bit to the this past weekend's box office, it sort of played out as expected. Ridley Scott's $140 million biblical epic Exodus, Gods and Kings, it won the day, earning $24.5 million. Uh, a little bit of a soft opening, but it was that's kind of in the range that it was expected. And it was also good enough for it to topple The Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 1 from atop its box office perch, where it's resided for the past three weeks. The Hunger Games did pull in uh, $13 million, though, which is good enough to push its total U.S. take, its total domestic take, north of $277 million, which makes it the second highest grossing film of 2014 behind Guardians of the Galaxy. It also pushed its total global take north of $600 million. And then finally today, a couple of little updates on the upcoming film Skull Island. This is the film that Legendary Pictures is making for Universal. And you'll remember that they released sort of a mysterious trailer uh, for the picture back in uh, earlier this past spring at, at Comic-Con, sort of announcing the movie through this trailer. Uh, and now it looks like they're going to they changing the title a little bit just to make it clear what the film is about. And now the movie is called Kong Skull Island. So those who don't know that Skull Island is the place where King Kong was originally captured from, now now you know. Now it's hard to hard to to not get that. In addition, the film's release date has been moved. It was originally set for release in November 2016. Now it's going to land in March 10th, 2017. So those who are excited about the return of Kong to the big screen. You're going to have to wait a little bit longer, apparently. And that's all the time that I have for today. Enjoy the rest of your Monday. Mm.